हेलो हेलो हाय ओके सो शॉल वी स्टार्ट और ओके ओके मार्जिन ओके सॉरी मारेक एंड गादू मारेक एंड गादू गाइस सो आई थिंक मार्जिन विल नॉट जॉइन अस आई थिंक ही इज बिजी डूइंग सम स्टफ ही इज नॉट रिप्लाइंग आल्सो सो आई थिंक वी शुड स्टार्ट ओके ओके या So hello everyone. My name is Deepak Khatri. You also know me as Lord for Linux on Slack, uh, and I am presenting uh, this presentation on Linux file structure and GSOC with Marek, Edgardo, and Marcin, uh, who is not available at this moment, but he worked very hard for the presentation. So, Marek, Edgardo, please introduce yourself. Then we'll. I'll go on with the presentation. Sure, I'll start first. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Edgardo. Uh, I will be here to, uh, helping with the presentation on the Linux file structure. I have used Linux for a couple of years now, and I'm not an expert user, but I I can say that I have been good at it. So, if you have any questions, please let me know. And I also, if you have questions about installing OpenVD on Ubuntu. I'd be happy to answer those. Thank you. Hello, I'm Marek. Hello, I'm Marek, and uh, I was using Linux for about 15 years or so, and um, mainly as not power user, but, but some things uh, that really needed. Uh, was more actually, I think that. Uh, Uh, if you have any problem, you can also come to me and ask or to Slack uh, to our uh, study group channel. That's all I think. Okay, Edgardo. Yes. All right. So for the first half of the presentation, we'll be covering the file system structure. We'll cover we'll do an overview. Directories. We'll talk about the role of the file system itself. We'll do. We'll talk about directories, uh, like home and media and roots, and which, and then we'll talk about how they work. 
Okay, so in the part two, we will talk about Google Summer of Code and we'll talk about how, why communication is the key to get your project and how you can decide your project if you have not already decided. And it is very important to build trust for getting a project. And I will also talk about how to curate your proposal. All the things like communication and your project decision and this building of trust are the main key ingredients of your project proposal. And you also have to submit a CV we are not going to talk about creating a CV, only the proposal stuff. If you are interested in learning about how to create or curate a good CV, we can share links for that. Now we will start with the Linux file structure presentation. So this, pres uh, Okay, this slide was intended uh, for Marcin to cover, but we don't have him uh, at this moment. So I will do this one. So why you want to learn about Linux file structure? Can you do, can you run through all the tasks of the day without knowing it? Surely you can, but it is very likely that you might be interested in knowing all the file structure because you are like already getting into technical stuff by taking a scholarship so if you have if you are new to linux it is okay uh, you will be fine if you have tried to install open Vino on the linux machine you might got some experience with opt file uh, folder where you have where you may have installed your open Vino toolkit so mainly file system controls how data is stored it organizes it it is not like file structures is not very key part of the operating system from its beginning uh, after errors getting errors and a lot of tries uh, they divided all the parts all the main parts related to hardware mainly related to libraries and devices all things they isolated everything so that you can get a clear view how things are working and then uh, this file system hierarchy standard came out uh, after all this because it defines the directory structure and directory con content in Linux distributions. Uh, so the latest version is 3.0, which is released on 3rd June 2015. File system, uh, other than input output control APIs is a major interface between user space, which is mainly your applications and kernel space using uh, example your drivers uh, so uh, it helps the pcb which is process control block and the context switcher context switching mechanism uh, and the schedule scheduler all these main parts of the operating system to use all the libraries and device configurations all that so Edgardo, Marcin uh, is not taking this one, so we will split all the parts. Uh, uh, I will talk about system bootloader. You guys can take store appli uh, application binaries and procfc and sysfs. All right, so if you are using Linux, you may come across this bootloader thing which is also known as grub bootloader for most of the Linux system. I think grub2 is the recent version. And the only thing it does before loading the kernel onto the memory, it initiates some processes. Okay, so bootloader is the main program that 
loads the kernel into the memory. So it initiates all the hardware necessary for uh, turning on your computer. It loads the kernel, then kernel loads all the uh, required file for graphical user interface and application stack, all that. So it is uh, an ex executable file that starts to run on the beginning or your, of your PC startup and it is responsible for hardware utilize, uh, initialization and kernel load. Marek? Okay, uh, so now I'm talking, uh, I will talk about uh, the store application binaries uh, uh, and uh, uh, configuration. Uh, well, uh, as you will see later uh, when we talk about the specific directories um, in more detail, uh, there are uh, two different directories, one for binaries for uh, single user mode, sorry and the other for uh, con uh, text configuration files which uh, are actually made only to cleanly uh, sort out this uh, whole mess which uh, would be if we didn't use uh, different folders actually there is a atc folder right for configuration files mm -hmm. Uh, which uh, stores all uh, configuration files for our uh, programs and uh, uh, another directory for uh, spef specifically for uh, binaries uh, of uh, really important commands. Actually, we will get it in the de details later, so I, I don't think I have much to say about it now. Unless, uh, Edgardo, you want to say something more, because... Okay, so I'll talk about the PROC FS. So it is mainly for the processes. Uh, you may know the command known as PID, which is process ID. And a lot of, they are called system calls, which directly call to the kernel of the operating system and get the information out. So there is a special file system that represents information about processes uh, and other information like process control block, which is a file structure used for uh, all the processes running so that uh, the CPU can be used by the scheduler uh, in an optimized manner. Uh, I can show you how you can get the CPU information using this cat proc cpu information command you guys can see the terminal right yes so everything related to my cpu uh, is here you can go to the cd proc which is for processes folder and you will get a lot of other related things you might be interested in Edgardo, you want to take CSFS? Yes. So CSFS, as stated, is a it's a pseudo file system that's provided by the kernel. Now this exports information about subsystems, hardware devices, and device drivers, and it's it's specifically used for their configuration. Um, it's it, now CSFS itself is a virtual file system. Now the SysCTL, which is which is configuration panel, they're they're available at the proc sys, which is again as going goes back to the proc directory, and you, it's a part of proc CFS. For example, you use sudo c sysctl w net dot ip ipv4 dot ip underscore forward equals one, or you could just use sudo bash c. And then what it does here is that it says an echo one to the IP to the IP forward uh, file. Basically, this controls all the hardware devices and as as listed. So 
it's very similar to proxy events, but this has to do again with these, with these uh, subsystems. Okay, so these are the main roles a uh, uh, file system uh, performs. Uh, so you learned about boot order, how binaries are stored, and uh, things related to processes and things related to system and system control. This is the hierarchy of all the files for the Linux operating system. Yes. Uh, so yeah, I, I, will, see, uh, uh, I think I we should I uh, show the my part. Right. I, I think we should show the detailed part. Okay. Marek. Uh, well, uh, as you see, there are a lot of uh, directors which uh, we omitted uh, in our uh, presentation, but uh, as you can uh, see, you could uh, get more information about them if you are interested. Uh, so, uh, uh, as was mentioned before, bin stores uh, essential binaries, with, uh, slash, well, actually, we should start from slash. Uh, slash is the so-called root. And uh, if you look at the um, directory as a tree, uh, which is upside down, then uh, uh, root is the beginning of the, every other uh, branch. And uh, from there, we have uh, uh, bin which uh, holds binaries for uh, as you can see uh, a lot of uh, important uh, commands like uh, ch mode and uh, ch own and actually they are all essential so uh, yes ls kill well they, they are based uh, basic and needed uh, always. Uh, boot has static files of bootloader, so uh, everything related to root. Uh, ATC uh, has uh, configurations in text files. Mm -hmm. Then we have USR, uh, which is uh, for uh, data which is uh, shareable between uh, different uh, users, etc. You can see, for example, that there are, are manual pages in it, or uh, other binaries which are not uh, essential ones. Uh, then we have uh, variable data files, uh, system bi binaries, Temporary files, uh, which are literally temporary, they are deleted on GitHub. Uh, we have the also uh, dev for uh, directory, which is uh, which stores information uh, location of special or device files. Uh, there is also uh, the dev null directory, which is uh, specific. Uh, we have also a home folder, which is which holds uh, every user uh, data. Mm, well, actually, not all users, because there is also root folder. So we have uh, root on root folder, which is a home for, uh, directory for uh, root user. There are also library directory mount. Uh, uh, director for mounted files and uh, additional uh, application software, which is OPT. OPT. So I think that's all. Okay, so uh, I want to add that all the administrative users and non-administrative users uh, files will be included in the home directory. Then home slash the username it might be uh, administrative user or not then there is also an other 
directory for a user called root, which is not the slash folder. I think we will talk about it in the okay. next slide. So let's let's go to the right. So the root part was for Edgar, uh, right? Yes. I'll take I'll take over for here. Basically, the root directory or the slash directory is where all the directories, which include the the bin, lib, dev, boot, all these directories are stored. And of course, where the home directories also lie, the root users, and this is. And as ex as as Merrick explained before, this is the if the, if the file system was an inverted tree, the root would essentially be at the very top of the tree. And without this directory, none of these other directories would exist. You would not have device files. You would not have libraries, and you certainly would not have binary files. All right. Yes. Okay. Then we have uh, essential. I will take it. Uh, then we have essential command binaries. Uh, uh, this directory contains essential ex executable commands that need to be available in single user mode for all users. So it has, uh, as it was shown in the previous picture, uh, we have cat, ls, mpow. RAM, uh, all those uh, important uh, commands which uh, are needed, for example, to create a new file, to uh, remove it, uh, to change its name, to copy it, etc. And uh, as you can see, uh, single user mode is mainly used for maintenance for of multi user systems. Uh, some tasks may require exclusive access to shared resources. For example, uh, running FS, uh, I have no idea how to read it in English. <laughs> On disk, uh, this mode can also be used for security purposes. Uh, network services are not run. Uh, so uh, if you are, uh, for example, want to make sure that your system is secure and all your configuration files for uh, web are uh, for um, your network devices are uh, correct, you can uh, start only a single user mode and uh, fix everything and then uh, go back to normal usage. Uh, on some systems, a lost super user password can be changed by switching to a, a single user mode, but not asking for the password. Yes, actually, from uh, what I remember, it's pos possible to be on Ubuntu. Do, but I'm not 100% sure. And uh, I think that's all because Edgardo, do you know is it possible to change uh, super user uh, password on Fedora without? Uh, um, I actually did try before, but no. I believe you actually have to be that user in order to change it. I don't think you could. Yeah, because I know because I done it on uh, the Ubuntu or, or, or Debian. I, I I'm not sure now because but they have different policies about it. So uh, I'm not sure about which one it was, but I'm sure that uh, it's not standard way because uh, if someone has a physical access to your computer, if you could. Uh, actually do anything with it so it's not a greatest idea to have, have, have this possibility okay next okay so i'll talk about the boot directory which is mainly for the bootloader configuration file you can change the timings timings by mean time by timing i mean uh, how much the boot screen must wait before loading the kernel so 
you may have seen a lot of list listings for all the operating system available in your disk uh, during dual boot or if you are using fedora or some other red hat based, based linux you are getting a last three kernel updates you can choose any of that or a rescue boot uh, or the windows bootloader if you are if you have boot, uh, dual booted your system so everything related to the uh, everything related to that option option files uh, is uh, stored in the boot, uh, slash boot directory bootloader and all that uh, in it ram disk uh, i am not very familiar with it and linux kernel itself is under the boot because uh, it is not a great idea to keep it uh, very separate from the bootloader so it is also present in the slash boot directory yes Gardu, you want to take sure. this in? Now, this is the dev directory, or as it's known, this is the device file directory. Now, this contains the device files for other devices. Now, for example, so if you go to your machine and you put Alice Dev, you notice some, for example, S, uh, slash dev slash SDA or SDB, or if you have different partitions, you will notice that it says S, slash dev slash SDA1 or SDA2. And mostly these are for hard and these are for either hard drives or SSDs. Now, again, this and as explained below here are the the chart here explains the character and block devices. For example, we have the root TTY, which is major number four, minor number zero, and the device name would be TTY zero. And by the way, if you have if you connect an Arduino to your Linux machine it will show up as a TTY device. So if you're going to use your Arduino on, on Linux, make sure you, you could connect to the correct device directory. And then the second one would be the root disk. This is a major number eight and minor number zero. Now, of course, the, the major number de denotes device type, which is standardized, and the minor number denotes the device number within device type, which is also driver dependent. So in this case, it would be called SDA. And then the second part would be the second, uh, would be the partition, which would be, would be major number eight and minor number 17. I should note that, again, so if you have multiple drives, like let's say I have two SSDs on Linux, one would be, and each has, two different partitions. One would be SDA1, SDA2, and my second SSD would be SDB1 or NSDB2. SDB so make sure if you're trying to look at, at how much file space you have on your directory to make sure to know which, which directory you're looking at. Thank you. Okay, so SDA, if you don't know, SDA means SCSI disk, S C S I SCSI, yes. which is uh, which is small computer system interface. Uh, and Edgardo said you, if you have two hard drives or two SSDs, uh, they will be listed as SDA and SDB. So I have two. SSDs in this system. So this one is shown as SDA and SDB. And for embedded controller stuff, uh, it, if you are using any RS-232 chip, it, it will be listed as TTY or it might also be listed as USB zero or USB some a number after that. So I'll be taking this ETC part which is also known, known as etc. means other things, so on and so forth, related to configuration files. Uh, we already talked about a different directory, which is mainly for configuration files. If you have anything other than those configuration, it, uh, they'll be listed uh, in the ETC. So we have only 10 minutes left. Uh, 
that's all about etc uh, we, we can share others reading material on the group itself okay so i'll take the library part also for the library uh, all if you are using python c++ c all the libraries you are calling like import sys it is stored in python 3.7 or python 2.x lib slash python then your version number and for c it is available in slash lib gcc and all the other libraries related to firmware or your hard uh, hardware your wi-fi card sound card all those libraries which are going to be called by the driver or your kernel are stored in the slash lib folder uh, well, I'm gonna talk about a uh, little bit about uh, user sound folders. Well, the home uh, directory is main uh, directory which stores every other user uh, names. And um, for example, uh, if we have a username uh, for Delta, uh, then uh, his uh, all the files, the files like documents pictures etc would be in the home delta folder uh, i think it's uh, similar to um, thing which we can find in windows or, or mac so there's not not much to say more about it well the, there is a difference because the root user is not a normal user uh, and uh, uh, in earlier version, it was uh, stored di directly in the root directory, but it was quite a mess, so they decided to put it in the root directory, in the root directory, so it's a root on a root, and uh, it's possible to uh, use uh, root, to create the uh, root directory as inside the home directory but it could be problematic in uh, case you your uh, all, uh, all, all directories didn't mount correctly and uh, as it says it is says uh, said that the many distribution uh, 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 lock uh, the root uh, user because uh, they think it's uh, too dangerous for for uh, most of the user to let uh, to let run it directly. For example, Ubuntu is known for it. I think they uh, they are the first distribution which tried it. Uh, so when you use Ubuntu, you actually have no access to it. So you don't have to worry about it, right? And uh, actually, you shouldn't use uh, root uh, uh, home uh, directory at all because it uh, could be uh, reasons for use it, it uh, for using it are actually so special that most users won't want to find them at, at all i think that's all okay so we talked about root directory which is for root user and there's also other root directory we talked about, which is slash. They are different. One is for the user, root user, and the other one is the main directory, which which holds all the other main files and folders related to your Linux distribution. Edgardo? Yes. So. Briefly, this is the these are the the files that are temporarily required and are used by certain programs. They create log files and temporary storage. Now, basically, now these files are needed for some programs. That basically means that if a program runs, they will be needed. But if you delete them or if you does do something else, then what will happen is there there will be a system crash. So yes, these files are necessary for these programs to run. So if you have downloaded anything on 
your Linux machine and if you have not chosen to store it in the downloads it will probably go into the temp folder I think mm -hmm. yeah it's the same as okay. on Windows yeah it'll disappear if it's not if, if okay Marek you want to take this one no I think it was a part of part or, or yours uh, I think it was mine but uh, if you want to uh, please no no take no it. Okay, so I'll talk about the slash var folder, which contains the data related to your machine while it is running. So var temp it is for temporary files, which is different from the temp slash temp, which is used by other applications to store to store temporary files. Like uh, if you are working on GIMP, it might be storing all the files or the session files uh, in the temporary folder. So if the application crashes, it can start from the very same point it crashed on. And uh, so uh, where run file contains information about the system that is valid until next login, which is not possible in slash temp directory. Uh, it removes everything when computer shuts down or you reboot your computer and where log file takes care of all the log files for all your programs all the system crash information will be available in where log files there is also a different log directory i think edgardo marek yes uh, i'm not sure the exact path of the directory but there is also a different log directory like uh yes edgardo it's your part yeah I'll do this. sure i'll do this one now this basically contains the subdirectory where removable media is installed so we have flash drives external hard drives cds dvds blu-rays so in this case, if I had a USB drive named USB 1, then it will be in the directory slash media slash USB 1. Okay. So that's all for the part one. We will start with the GSOC session in the next part. We'll talk about the GSOC in next part of the meeting. If you have any question, you can turn on your mic and ask. We don't have uh, much time left. You can type your question uh, on the chat window if you want to. Okay, so let's call it a meeting then. We'll start with the GSOC okay. part in the next session at 9.15. Okay, bye. Bye.